to wind down, time to wise up, discussing life, exploring the word, gaining wisdom with encouraging words. It's time for Tea with Tip. Hi, and welcome to Tea Time. I am so excited. Um, as your host, I cannot tell you how much I really appreciate all of the love last year for um, our inaugural season for Tea Time with Tiff. It was amazing. We got a chance to have so many different guests and we talked about so many different things. And this year is going to be better. This year we'll have more episodes, more guests, special surprises along the way. It's going to be great. So to kick things off for season two of Tea Time with Tiff, I have a very, very special guest. It's going to be fun. It's going to be epic. <laughs> I, <laughs> I have with me none other than Apostle Larry Henderson Jr., who just happens to be my bae, my boo, my husband, my baby daddy. I'm so happy. <laughs> so please welcome Apostle Larry to the show. Hey guys, happy new year. <laughs> so this is January. Um, this year, this season for Tea Time with Tiff, you can expect um, an episode every second and fourth Sunday of the month. So I'm excited about that. We will bring to you um, very relevant live content to help you to wind down and wise up. That is the whole theme of this. This is not where we spill tea about other people and talk about them. Well, we want to help you every, every other Sunday to really just wind down in the evening to prepare for your week and really wise up to some ideas, concepts, spiritual gifts, different things to help you along the way. So um, I look forward to sharing with all of you. I look forward to really hearing from you let me hear from you chat um, um chat with us live come in tell us about what's going on talk to me send me an email go right to our website you can go to um the kingdomac.com send me an email let me know what's going on with you chat live during this time i want to connect with you so um this is really um, an exciting time here um at the Kingdom Advancement Center because we're doing a lot of things to kick off this new year. And the first thing is um, every year we release the word of the Lord. So this year, um, the word of the Lord for 2020, we just released it last night um, at our corporate worship for 2021. And I have Apostle here because he's going to talk to us about that. Um, I want to first <coughs> ask you, what is the word of the Lord for 2021? But I actually don't want you to answer it yet. Mm -hmm. I, before you answer it, I want you to tell me um, first, how did you come up with this word of the Lord and why do you feel the need to address the people with the word of the Lord every year? Okay. Well, well, thanks for inviting me to the show first. I've been waiting a long, long time to, <laughs> to get on the show to represent brothers everywhere. Um, and yeah, you the look, first man on the show. That's right. And you look really amazing on the show. Thank you, babe. You look quite delicious, actually. This is, we're recording. All right, go on. What, what, is, what is the first you question? You're supposed to talk about how you came up with the word of the Lord. <laughs> you heard too much. All right, the, the, word of the, the word of the Lord. I'll try to behave. I'm just going to be me. Um, every year around about October, um, we begin listening of the Lord for the word of the Lord for the next year. And so that's usually the season. That's the beginning of the, that's the, beginning of the first quarter. Um, so that's usually the season where we begin to to pin our ears to the Holy Spirit to hear the word of the Lord. Um, of course, the scripture said, he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the church. Um, in 2020, we, I actually did not yet hear a word from the Lord beginning in, in October. Um, we, I listened again in November for God to begin to speak toward the next year. I actually did not hear a word from the Lord at all. I was completely empty. I was, com my, my, my ears were completely silent until the beginning of December, actually. Um, so this year, the word of the Lord came in December. The, the way that we listen for is by speaking in tongues, by praying in the spirit and asking God to speak toward the next year. Um, we were really busy, um, in 2020, um, because of the pandemic, because of many other things, we actually were more busy in, 
in 2020, preparing the word of the Lord for 2020 and executing mm -hmm. the word of the Lord, which was the year of exponential growth, which was the year of leadership. There were a lot of issues which needed to be addressed in the body of Christ in 2020. Um, so I don't, I don't even think that we even got a chance to breathe and settle down enough <laughs> until December to really hear the mm -hmm. word of the Lord. Um, I would agree with that. We, we actually were asked by another ministry for the word of the Lord. And it actually wasn't until that week, which was December the... Like the 18th. The 18th. Like so the week of December the 18th in the beginning of that week is when I first started hearing the Lord speak about 2021. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the reason why it probably took so long for us to hear is because sometimes God won't release something until someone puts a demand on, on the word of God. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't until another uh, ministry by, by Elder April Young, she began to put a demand on knowing what the word of the Lord was mm -hmm. um, in November. And so it wasn't until December that we began to hear the word of the Lord. I actually heard that word of the Lord two times before we actually had to release it. That's when I first heard the Lord say that 2021 would be the year of the return. Um, and so, so please go mm -hmm. ahead. I mean, since you're already going there, mm -hmm. what is this? Explain the word of the Lord this year, the return, um, and, you know, kind of go into detail about it if you could. Right. Um, once I heard the Lord say it was the year of return, I began to receive a prophetic vision of what that return looked like. And the Lord began to, what, what will happen is that once we have a prophetic vision, you know, the, the word of God is two for the twofold. The Bible says the word of God is a double edged sword. So we teach here at the kingdom advancement center that that sword is the logos word, which is the, which is the written word of God. And the, and that other, the other side of the double edged sword is the, the rhema word of God or the express or prophetic word of God. And so those two things must go hand in hand. Um, just like in the scriptures, the word of the Lord came, came to me in a vision in which I saw masses of God's people beginning specifically to return to the church specifically. Um, so that's the first vision. And then my, my next step is to begin to say, well, you know, Jesus, if this is the word of the Lord, then what's the scripture that goes with the rhema word what's the logos word that goes with the rhema word that you're giving so he actually did not begin to give me the scripture until the second time i saw the vision mm -hmm. and at that time he began to say i want you to begin to read the return of god's people to jerusalem uh through the man of god through the prophet nehemiah and so of course i began to go to nehemiah chapter one nehemiah chapter two began to read the entire book of of nehemiah to begin to see if the written word of God coincided with the prophetic word of God. Hmm. So um, when you went to Nehemiah, what was it about Nehemiah that spoke to you concerning this return and, and the vision of masses of people? What was it about Nehemiah that really made the connection? Once I knew that the word of the Lord was to return, I also heard in the vision that it was also to rebuild. So I began to ask God questions. You'll see in the Bible when God speaks to Abraham or any of the patriarchs in the word of God that they question, they ask God questions. Mm -hmm. They don't, it's not a, it's not a one-sided dialogue. So I also began to ask the Lord, you're saying 2021 is the year of the return. What are we returning to do? That's an obvious yeah. question. And so yeah. he began to say, well, you're returning to rebuild the walls of the city. Um, mm -hmm. And so when I began reading the book of Nehemiah, the way that I began to confirm that I'm at all hearing anything from Jesus is I look for those words once I started reading the book of, of Jeremiah. And of course, if you read the book of Nehemiah, and of course, if you read Nehemiah chapter one and chapter two, um, it was confirmed by the Holy Spirit and by the written word of God that those words return and the word reveal are in Nehemiah one and two. And so that's how I knew that I was on the correct prophetic track. Hmm. So why do we even need a word of the Lord? So one of, one of the things that we, one of the things that we do incorrectly in, in church life 
is that sometimes we proceed in church service or sometimes we proceed in Christian life, though we have the Bible without having a now word. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we get wrong about the scriptures is thinking that everything we read in the scriptures is directly for us personally. And that's because just by nature, we're narcissistic. You know, we're in the we're in the Facebook, Instagram generation. We're always taking pictures of ourselves. You know, the 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 sun and the moon revolve around us individually. So we think everything we read in the Bible is directly speaking to me. And because the word of God is alive, the Bible gives you that feeling like it's speaking directly to you. But believe it or not, what God said to Moses was for Moses. Yeah. What God said for Peter was for Peter. Mm -hmm. And the question is, is what God is saying to the people within it applicable for you to do now? Come on. Though what the word of God is generally counsel for his people, that does not answer the question specifically, what is God saying to you now? Like God gave Joseph a specific word that there would be seven years of plenty and then there would be seven years of famine. Mm -hmm. That's a specific word to Joseph in his generation, though. Right. And so the reason why I feel like I'm talking too loud, the no, reason why good. we you're need good. the reason why we need the word of the Lord or a prophetic word is in conjunction with the general counsel of God to love our neighbor mm -hmm. and to love the Lord God as ourselves, mm -hmm. and to encourage one another and not tear each other down. That's, we should do that all the time, Right. but we need the word of the Lord to know in this season though, okay. in 2021, specifically what is God telling us to do? And is God going to be with us when we do things for him in this season? That's oh. what the word of the Lord is. For. Okay. Okay. That's, that's actually really good. The The question I have now is what should our response be in, the, in light of this? So especially now you're saying, you know, you're talking about the return and um, I really kind of want to get more in depth uh, about the saints. Like what is this? How should we prepare for this return or what, you know, what is it that we should be doing in light of this word about the return and, and, and rebuilding? What should we be doing to respond to this word? The first thing that we need to, the first thing that I would counsel people to do is go on KAC TV, mm -hmm. listen to the word of the Lord that we released on, on January, the, on, on last night, which was January the 8th, January the 8th, go on KAC TV mm -hmm. and, and watch that video and just begin to meditate on the prophetic word mm -hmm. first. Uh, Psalm one says, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And That's on right. his law, he meditates day and night. That's right. So I would counsel people to first sit, hear the word of the Lord, weigh in your spirit, whether the Holy Spirit testifies that this is indeed the word of the Lord for mm -hmm. this next season that we're entering into and begin to ask God what you personally need to do about it. Yeah. Because as God's people, there has to always be a mindset shift. The Bible said we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And so what that means is it's not enough to just hear a word. Yeah. We've, we've gotten, we've gotten word bougie. <laughs> We've gotten word bougie. We bougie now. We've gotten word bougie in the body of Christ where we just like to go to word churches so uh -huh. that we can say, you know, I go to so and so's churches where we're receiving the word. Yeah. Right. And so it's not enough just to go to a word church and just to get a good word yeah. or to just or to be disappointed when you don't get a good word. It, you have to start with the mindset that when you receive the word of God. It has to always start with the mindset where you're actively asking yourself as you hear the word, what you're going to do about it. I mean, the Bible is very clear about that. You know, don't be hearers of the word only. So mm -hmm. deceiving yourselves, like in which so many people do, they, um, they hear the word of the Lord. They hear the Lord. They hear the word every week. Mm -hmm. They hear the, the, the word come forth and they're like, oh, that was good. Mm -hmm. You know, that was a good word. That's you know, a good you, word. We get this all the time. <laughs> That's a good word. But the, the truth of the matter is, the, the, the question should be, what should I do about this word? And the, the way that you kind of know that you didn't have the mindset to do something about the word is if you return home 
and tell someone, man, that was a good service. That was, man, pastor really preached today. And then somebody say, well, what was it about? And you say, you know, oh, you know I, I don't, even I don't remember. remember. <laughs> That's a clue that you did not enter into his gates with the with the mindset to ask yourself what you're going to do about it because yeah. if you have that mindset you'll know exactly what the word of god was and, and it doesn't matter how long ago it was like a real life changing life altering word that you take in with the with the intention of doing something about it it stays with you i was telling someone mm -hmm. the other day that when i was in college or maybe in the, you know when we was first married i don't remember how early it was but i remember hearing a word from creflo dollar one mm -hmm. time and he was he was preaching about being a covenant person. Yes, being a covenant yes, man. Yes, he's like covenant man. See, I remember like, too. See, so you remember too. <laughs> and he was like, you know, covenant man says, mm -hmm. and he was talking about in Second Chronicles mm -hmm. twenty mm -hmm. how covenant man says, you will hear and you will and speaking you speaking of King Jehoshaphat. See about Jehoshaphat exactly. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, he's when Jehoshaphat responded when he was praying, he said to God, you will hear mm -hmm. and you will answer. Yes. And it was a thing. He says, when you know you are in covenant with the Father, you can go to the Father. So, oh no, you will hear me and you will and you will answer mm -hmm. because I understand the covenant that we have with one another. Yes. I'm your daughter. You mm -hmm. speak to me. We have a relationship. Mm -hmm. But it was something that I heard 20 years ago that has never left me because I listened to it with the intent on doing something about it. Amen. And I think this is what is lacking period though we can get every word of the lord from 2010 from 1985 until now and until we actually get the word of the lord to do something about it nothing will happen differently in our lives until mm -hmm. we actually take it and say hey i'm going to do something about this word mm -hmm. i'm going to hear this word every single time so now when i hear this word of the return this word to rebuild even the other words that were released last night the words of the year to arise and redeem mm -hmm. the year of the accelerant I now can say, okay, and, and I really um, implore you to listen to the word of the Lord on KAC TV because it will help you if you make a decision to listen to it with the intent on doing something about it. I'm really loving the way you're wearing this sweater. Oh my God, dude, this is, this, this is, oh. So anyway, listen to it with the intent on doing These something. These are some nice curls this woman or guy has on her head too. America. I, <laughs> I can't. I mm, can't. Hallelujah. God. Glory I, be to God. Are we supposed to be doing this? Okay. Go ahead. I'm back. Focus now. Are you focused? I was focused when I said that in Jesus' name. In light of recent events mm -hmm. in our country, come on back, baby. Mm -hmm. How is the word of the Lord for 2021 relevant? Um, it's it's relevant on on several levels. Um, beginning in beginning last year. The Lord also added to the word of the Lord that our word, which was the year of exponential growth and the year of leadership had national impact. Mm -hmm. And so that was something that was different for the kingdom advancement center. That was something different for you and I, as we walk in the office of apostle and, and prophet respectively, that God added to our word. He allowed our word to have impact outside of the kingdom advancement center. Yeah. And so um, even God allowing us that privilege um, was an, an opportunity to expand our authority. And so as we look at this, as we look at this year being the year to return and rebuild, the Lord has again let us know that this word is for the Kingdom Advancement Center. But this word also has national impact. And so when we begin to think about, OK, well, what should we do about this word? Then I would. I would begin at the highest level of the nation, which is starting from the White House. Mm -hmm. And if I had a chance to talk to President Biden, President Biden, if you're watching this, this is a word for you. <laughs> um, that we need to begin to return and rebuild. One of the major things that we're going to have to do this year, if you're keeping up with the news, is that we're going to have to rebuild our image internationally mm -hmm. as a country. Mm -hmm. Uh, America is the leader of the United States of America is the leader of the free world. Mm -hmm. And we do that by having a democratic republic, by spreading democracy around the world, or at least sharing democratic principles with other other nations around the world that have not adopted that way of thinking. And so one thing that we're going to have to return to rebuild is the spirit of democracy. Mm. is the spirit of rule by the people. 
Oh. And, uh, you know, if, if you study the Bible, you know, at least in concept, democracy is actually a kingdom concept. Hmm. And you may never have thought about that before. If you read the book of Daniel, um, you see that God makes it clear to Nebuchadnezzar that he rules from heaven through the kingdom of men. Yeah. But the kingdom of men has been given to the saints. Hmm. It's the saints yeah. who shall take and possess the kingdom yeah. and rule the kingdom forever and ever. And so what that means is that God's people are the people who are ruling hmm. the kingdom of God. And um, that at that, at least in concept, is the basic concept of democracy, that the government is ruled by the people. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes. You know, we like the other day, people were thinking that our democracy was getting ready to crumble when they saw people descending on Capitol Hill yeah. to, to revolt and to interrupt Congress. And and what you should know is that Jesus Christ has no intention on undoing our democratic republic anytime soon, mm -hmm. because our democratic republic is ruled by the people and for the people, which is actually a kingdom concept which Jesus Christ himself instituted on earth as it is in heaven by founding this country in the first place. Hmm. So the first thing that I would say needs to be done is that from the highest office in the land and trickling on down to us in our local cities and villages here in the United States of America, that we need to begin to work to reestablish integrity in our democratic system. Ooh, That's what geez. we need to rebuild. Mm. We need judgment has already taken place at the house of God, the church mm -hmm. and judgment has already taken place in the United States of America as it relates to our hypocrisy in being democratic internally within our country. That's what the war has been about. And so we need as individuals, as individual unelected citizens and as elected representatives uh, here in this country to begin to restore integrity to the way that we even debate across political aisles. We need to restore integrity to that because right now we've gotten to a point where we cannot even debate and come to any kind of agreement without staunchly being partisan and not having an ear ready to listen to people whose viewpoint might be different from ours. And so that's the first thing that I would say at the highest level we need to rebuild. At an individual level, each of us needs to make sure, and the new year is always a great time to do this, we just need to make sure at a fundamental level that you've made a commitment to Jesus. Hmm. And mm -hmm. Apostle, what does that mean? Well, a commitment to Jesus starts, it's always, we make the gospel complicated and it's not meant to be. Hmm. A fundamental decision that you need to make as a Christian is to have a lifestyle of prayer and Bible study. Read the Bible. <laughs> That's what you need to do. And if you haven't made a commitment to do that, then you haven't made a commitment to Jesus. Yeah. And then this. So what, you know, what am I rebuilding as an individual where well, I'm rebuilding my relationship with Jesus? That's what I'm rebuilding. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. And I like any relationship. How do I, how do I begin to build or rebuild on it? Well, it starts one by an apology that I have sucked in my relationship with you. Mm -hmm. And that how relations, that's how marriage relationships does, work, right? And then you get it. Then I say, you know, do you, baby, do you forgive me? I forgive you. <laughs> and, and sometimes you have to apologize when you didn't even do anything wrong. It's just good. <laughs> it's just good for your spouse. It's just good for people who you're in friendship with from time to time for you to have a little check with them and just say you're sorry. You don't know what you're sorry for. You know you did something wrong. And so the same thing happens in our relationship to Jesus. We come to him and repent. Mm -hmm. We come to him and let him know we could do better. Yes. And yes. then once we do that, then trust is not given, but trust is built by some positive actions on behalf of people in the relationship. And so what's the positive action to show Jesus you're on the right track? Start reading his word. Hey. His word is his will. Huh. Start speaking to him in prayer. <laughs> Shut your mouth long enough while you're praying to let him talk. That's a relationship <laughs> building principle, isn't it? <laughs> to be quiet long enough to hear what somebody else has to say. And so that's how you should rebuild on an individual level, which is just making sure you're living your life according to the word of God every day. 
I love it. I love it. And I first want to say, like, this is this is really getting to the heart of what I wanted to um, talk about today. And that's just hearing how um, the father speaks to us and he shows us ways that he's going to, you know, that he can and, and, and will uh, be with us throughout the year. But we have to be receptive to that. And then we have to be in communication with him. We have to be in relationship with him in order to even know that. Because if, you, if you're not in relationship with him, how else can you know how to walk with him and move with him um, so that you can be in alignment with the word that he's saying? So if he's saying this is a year that we're going to rebuild, and if you're not really listening to him, you know, you won't even know where to get the materials to start building. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that relationship uh, really is, I think, is a key aspect of this. Um, and I kind of like the direction that this is going in because I want to talk about uh, the relationship of the the body of Christ, the church mm -hmm. as a whole. Mm -hmm. Because one thing that's happening right now is that the it seems to me that we're a bit divided. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of brothers and sisters. You and I, you know, we're a part of so many different groups of mm -hmm. pastors and leaders and mm -hmm. and. Uh, right now, a lot of us are thinking something totally different mm -hmm. about what's happening in our country. Mm -hmm. um, and some, you know, some of our, our good conservative evangelical brothers and sisters who are, are really thinking that um, they must do something drastic to stop um, President Biden's inauguration, to overturn um, uh, the election results to cause, I mean, like they really want anarchy. And these are pastoral leaders I'm talking about mm -hmm. who are thinking that this is just crazy and we have to, they want to restore whatever they felt like was lost. How are we going to return as one body? You know, we're one nation under God. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, this, he, he, as you just said, he loves democracy. This is something he wants to see the people do under his, under his tutelage and, mm -hmm. and leadership. I'm, I, I'm having trouble. If I could be honest, I'm having trouble with my connections with them. I'm like, I don't want to do anything with you because like you, like, I, I don't think that we're going to, cause I don't really see how I can make this middle ground with you. And that if you're like staunchly thinking this, what I think is dumb mm -hmm. and I just, I feel like my affiliation with you is, is I, I'm, I'm, I'm really rethinking some of these relationships because I'm like, we can't agree to disagree about my life. Mm -hmm. We can't agree to disagree about, you know, something so fundamental. Mm -hmm. Like we either gonna have to get on the same page or we just gonna have to get different books. Cause I don't really know how this is going to work. Mm -hmm. So speak and speak to us about how we're going to make, how we're going to return and rebuild as a body. One of the beauties of the church, one of the beauties of the, the body of Christ and in the world in general, but just speaking about the church is that, um, the church is not monolithic. Mm. The church is not, the, the church is multifaceted. All right. Mm. And one of the things that we have to remember, especially as apostolic people, and when I say apostolic, I mean people who believe in the fourfold ministry. We believe in apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. We believe in the prophetic. We believe in the kingdom of God and, and our Lord and Savior, the King Jesus Christ and the advancement of the kingdom of God. And, and we believe in the gospel of the kingdom. All right. Um, one of the things that we have to remember as apostolic people is that all of the other parts of the body are ordained and established also by Jesus Christ, though. Hmm. And so this is hard for us to swallow mm -hmm. theologically in the body of Christ, as there are other people in the church that do not agree with me hermeneutically or um uh, when we say hermeneutically, we're, we're speaking about what's my systematic theology. Mm -hmm. Like I at the Kingdom Advancement Center believes that speaking in tongues is essential. Mm -hmm. Well, as someone else who is evangelical um, may not see speaking in tongues as essential. They may see it either as optional mm -hmm. or they, they may see it as uh, already passed and died away. They may be cessationists in the first century church. So yeah. one of the things for me to remember is that Jesus on purpose has made the church multifaceted, which yeah. means that Jesus loves the Baptist church. Jesus <laughs> loves the Methodist church. 
Jesus loves the, the Lutheran church. Yeah. Jesus loves the Catholic church. Yeah. All of those parts of the church were established on purpose by Jesus at some point in time. Mm. And the way that Jesus keeps balance so that no part of the body, just like you think of your physical body, so that no part of the body dominates the whole body, each member has to do its part. Yeah. And so even when speaking to another Christian pastor or another Christian leader or another Christian bishop or whatever. And I know that we don't agree theologically. And I feel that my way, excuse me, of seeing the word of God is a must have. I must remember that there has to be room for grace and mercy in relationship with other people in the body of Christ. Hmm. So along with the word of God, to return and rebuild. Uh, one of the major pillars of that prophetic word is that people are going to begin to return to the church that left the church when we needed them most. Yeah. So some people in 2020, when this pandemic, pandemic arose in March, it really was here in January and probably December of 2019. But when the pandemic came and we were in stay at home orders and we went virtual, some people at the Kingdom Advancement Center and some people maybe at your church took that as an opportunity to get ghost on you, though, <laughs> because they wanted to leave anyway. <laughs> and so they used the pandemic as an excuse or as a reason to become absent mm. in the body of Christ. And of course, they wouldn't say that because who would say that? Right. <laughs> and and so. In 2021, there are going to be people who left your church that will return. Mm. And there are going to be people who are not traditional churchgoers who are going to return to the church. Like, you know, your uncle, your alcoholic uncle Nim, right? Like your promiscuous cousin Nim, right? There are going to be people um, who are normally Christmas and, and Easter. CMEs. Yeah, CMEs, right? Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. Right. There are going to be CMEs that are going to become um, consistent churchgoers in 2021. Mm -hmm. And so if you think about the story of the prodigal son, there was a son that stayed home and kept the house while the other son left and did whatever he wanted. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who stay in 2020, you might feel like that son who stayed home. I know I do. <laughs> I know I have that thought. Jesus, why are you letting some people in the body of Christ do whatever they want? As soon as I do one little thing, Jesus, you all on my case, Jesus. Like, why is that? And so um, one pillar of the year of the return is that those of us who were the son that stayed home, we got to get our mind Re recalibrated, you know, like the young people say, we gotta, you gotta get your mind you just... recalibrated. You gotta have a transformation by the renewing of your mind because when people begin to return the church, who you know abandoned it, abandoned it, you need to have mercy. Mm -hmm. You need to understand it's not about you; it's about the kingdom. You were serving; you were supposed to be serving to the glory of God anyway, not your own glory. Mm -hmm. a a amen. Amen. <laughs> right, and so. There's a process where we have to remove ourselves. All right. Yes, there are going to be people in the body of Christ. They're going to still be conservative evangelical people. You know, to be conservative by very nature means that someone is trying to conserve or preserve the good old days, the way that it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And the problem with conservatism is conservatives don't care don't realize or have never thought or even care to acknowledge that it may yesterday might not have been good for everyone. Hmm. Now see, that's, that's, oh, um, come on. Apostle. And so, um, Ooh, let me sip my tea. This good chamomile. I mean, mm. and so yesterday might not have looked good as good for me as it looked for you. Mm. The color of my skin may not have allowed yesterday to be as good for me as it was for you. Ooh. And so while you're about the business of conserving yesterday, you need to remember that some work needs to be done by the privileged class to make sure that today is as good for me as yesterday was for you. See, that's mm, it's that level of cognitive dissonance that I really. Right. 
that, that, that bothers that, me. Well, that's called progress, which is uh, why on the other side of the aisle, they're called the liberal or progressive party. Mm. And so the answer is not to be conservative or progressive. That's not the answer. The, the answer is that all of us in the body of Christ need to learn how to be progressively conservative. Mm. That's the answer. They need to be combined. The problem is we always take a side instead of remember, remembering that we have to be progressively conservative, mm -hmm. which means that we are always advancing, but we're advancing in wisdom and in counsel. We're advancing without extremes. Yeah. So that's the answer to, to answer your question. What do I do about other people in the body of Christ who don't agree with me? I continue to offer them grace and mercy. I acknowledge that they are still of God, though they don't see the word of God the same way that I do. And then I do what Jesus told the disciples. He said, the world will know that we are of the father by the way we love one another. And that's a work. That's Ooh, a sacrifice. That's a real work. To continue to love you when I know you have an ideology that will harm me later. Or I know that you actually really hate me though. Yeah. Like what I represent. Yes. And, and so, I have to love you in, in, in spite of it. And I know that's the real mm -hmm. point of what mm -hmm. we've been called to do. I know that that is who we speak It's hard to do. It is definitely hard to do. It is definitely easier said than done. People have done it. Dr. King did it. Yeah. His birthday is coming up. Happy birthday, Dr. King. You have to do. People have done it. Jesus said, uh, pray for them who despitefully use you. Pray for it's your true. enemies. It's true. And so there is a part of Christianity where we have to do things we don't like. Isn't, isn't that an idea, America? <laughs> so there is a part of Christianity. That's why it's called a sacrifice. Present your body as a living sacrifice. That's right. That's that means right. that at some point in my Christianity, I may have to love someone beyond my, my like for them. Yes. Ooh, ain't that a word? To love someone beyond my like. So thank you for addressing that. I think that's something that's really um, at the forefront of the minds of many. Mm -hmm. Um, just how do we progress from here? How do we go on from here knowing that the, there's a great divide in mm -hmm. our country right now? We have never been more divided than we were, you know, back in the 60s during the civil rights movement. This We're just as divided now as we were then. Um, and I think even now there's such a, uh, uh, there's such a deception that this division does not exist as much as, you know, as, as people think. Um, there are so many others who are like, don't believe the media. They're lying to you. Well, there's only so much that you can lie about when, when I can see it every day, I can mm -hmm. see it in my face. So really, um, I, what I hear you saying is that, um, for 2021, we, as the church, those of us who have, who are alive and remain, mm -hmm. that we should be the ones to, um, to always be ready for reconciliation, always mm -hmm. be ready to release the love of God to our, our brothers and sisters. Um, I don't think that requires me to be abused by them. I won't do that. Mm -hmm. I will love you, but you know, you should try Jesus, but not me. So I'm going to make, you know, this is, you know, cause I, I got these hands. Huh? This is, <laughs> Hey, this is my show, so you know. <laughs> West Side Sister. Um, but first, I just want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank mm -hmm. you for expounding. Um, I want to let all of our viewers know that this is just episode one. Um, but next week, um, our next um, showing, he'll be back again. We're going to continue our discussion. We're going to continue talking about this and some other things. Um, next time while you're chatting with us tonight, please, if there's something else that you want the good apostle to expound on, please put that in the chat now so that we can capture that and we can make sure we answer your questions next week. Cause I know this is a lot of information, a lot of things that he released to us today. Um, and I want to make sure that we, my team is here. I want to thank my team. I have a great production team who is here making sure that we get it done. So they're going to capture all of your questions and make sure that um, your questions are answered the next time um, our good apostle is here. I am grateful. I love you. You did a great job, even though you was a little on the edge sometimes. We'll take that. I like that lip gloss you got on your lips too. 
again. So this is why we have to close up today. We'll be back next time. Thank you for joining us um, on Tea Time with Tiff.